Here we go, let's talk about some trigonometric functions. You're probably trying to predict what I'm gonna write. A sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. No, actually, I'm not. Uh, I'm not, and it is. It is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, but that's not what I'm gonna write. This is adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent, and then we get to these crazy ones that you may or may not have seen before. Uh, what I'm gonna do is start on the tangent one that you actually just saw on the other side of this, and I'm gonna say that tangent is equal to sine over cosine. This helps when you're simplifying things like what you're gonna see with the Pythagorean identities at the bottom. So sine over cosine. And um, let's go down here. These are the reciprocal of everything that you see up here. So cotangent, is what this is called, is the reciprocal of tangent. Notice I just took the numerator, made it the denominator. The denominator becomes the numerator. It's the reciprocal. That's what it is. If you want to get a little technical, you could also say that this is 1 over tangent. It's the same thing. And if you want to get technical here, you could say this is 1 over cotangent, although I have never needed that identity or that identity in my recollection. All right, let's deal with cosecant and secant. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine and secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Good to know, isn't it? Aren't you glad you know that now? These have the opposite letter. When I first learned these, I thought, shouldn't cosecant be the reciprocal of cosine? It, it's not. They, it's, the C goes with that S, and this S goes with that C. That's the way it is. So if you want to expand this idea, you could also say the reciprocal of sine is cosecant, although it is rare that anyone ever uses that. And the reciprocal of cosine or the cosine is the reciprocal of secant. The big ideas on this one that you need to know, and you need to know, would be the stuff right here. Now, there's a little bit more that's about to happen with the Pythagorean identities, and when we do that, what I'm going to do is uh, kind of go back to the unit circle for a second on a scrap piece of paper, and I'll just grab the actual unit circle when you grab a scrap piece of paper. <clears throat> All right, I got your unit circle right here. Here's my unit circle. Wow, what a beautiful circle that is. And my radius is one, right? Okay, and we decided that any point on here was going to be cosine of my angle comma sine of my angle. That was the determination we made. So let's draw a right triangle. You saw this a few minutes ago. Let's draw a right triangle. There's my right triangle. So if I want to know this length right here, well, I don't know it, but I do know that it is the cosine value of the angle, this angle, this will be theta, and this would be the sine value, which makes sense because that's a coordinate. Like, I'd move over cosine, I'd go up sine, cosine comma sine. That's the, that's the coordinate. Those are distances. Coordinates are distances. If I wanted to look at that long and hard enough and start thinking about ancient Greek mathematicians, then I could probably come up with this idea. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, Pythagorean theorem. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals one squared. Well, one squared is just one. There you go. Now, if, if you're staring at the placement of the squared and you've not seen that before, I want to just point out on my scrap paper that this is the same thing as this which is not the same thing as this. In this case, right here, I would be squaring the theta and then taking the sine, but in this case, I am squaring the entire operation. Okay, these are equivalent. We use that one most of the time. Okay, so there's our first Pythagorean identity. And now we're going to build two others. So this one is good. It's fun to know. I'm going to highlight it in just a minute. I'm going to write it two more times just because I'm having so much fun I can't contain myself. Wow, wasn't that fun? It was for me. And we're going to do some crazy things with it using a different color. Just, again, it's fun. I'm going to... Just on a whim, somebody stop me. I'm having too much mathematical fun here. But on a whim, I'm going to divide by sine squared. Now, whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other side. I'm going to do that on every term. Every term is going to get divided by sine squared, and we're going to simplify that. And while I have a green pen in my hand, let's do the same thing here. We're going to divide every term by, whoops, not sine. Let's divide these by cosine. It's going to give us a different variation. 
Otherwise, we'd get the same thing and we'd learn nothing new. And we're here to learn, right? Right? <laughs> All right. Sine squared divided by sine squared. Oh, that's just one. I got that. Cosine squared divided by sine squared. Let's ignore the squares for just a second. Let's just pretend like this said cosine over sine. Cosine over sine is cotangent. So one plus cotangent, it's squared though, is equal to, okay, one over sine. One over sine is cosecant. It was squared, but it's cosecant squared. So, so far we have two Pythagorean identities. We're about to get a third one. Sine over cosine, yes, it's squared, but if I just wanted sine over cosine, I'd be getting a tan, ha, a tangent. All right, cosine over cosine is one, and one over cosine is secant. There we go. We have three Pythagorean identities. Here they are. I'm underlining them with a highlighter. I think that defeats the purpose, doesn't it? There they are. 